G'day, Michael here. I found more and more that I'm editing videos and processing videos and when it comes to processing the computer simply is a big um, slowdown point and I've been looking for a faster way of doing things. And what I discovered is KD and Live can generate a script so I can hand off the actual crunching of the video to another computer. Well this is what I intend to have is that other computer. It has uh, two quad-core CPUs, so it gives me a total of eight cores. It's older technology, but it is uh, really designed to work. Like, it can shift data at a, a massive rate. It's got 48 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you can see the RAID controller here. That's a redundant array of independent disks. That's a long way of saying it's a very fancy drive management system. The two drives that are flashing are currently being worked on by the RAID controller. And that was a job I set it up a few days ago to do, funny enough. It's actually just cleanly erasing those drives. Um, the other four are spanned as one single drive, which produces two effects. One, of course, the drives are not that large, and they're 300 gigabytes of drive, and spanning them means that I've got the ability by uh, 1.2 terabytes. It's about 1.1 terabytes when they're spanned. But it also means the writing to the disks is shared across the four. So it does speed the reading and writing process quite a bit. Now RAID controller, the way this thing's set up, it's kind of like its own computer with its own operating system that boots up. It takes ages to boot this machine up. And part of that, well the bulk of that booting is actually the RAID controller coming to life. Once that's up, then of course the computer itself boots up. But once it is running, um, the way that the RAID controller handles the disks is amazing. Um, this definitely is a good match for any SSD, and in fact, if you're doing lots and lots of tasks, this easily still outperforms SSD. The RAID controller basically takes the work of talking to the disks away from the computer itself. Uh, the computer itself just hands off big slabs of data to the RAID controller, and the RAID controller just makes it all happen with the drives. Now these drives in themselves, they are S SAS drives, which is a very, very fast uh, data channel in and out of the drives. And the drives are also very high performance server drives. They're older technology, but they're high performance of their type. They spin at 15,000 RPM. A lot of uh, laptop uh, drives and PC drives run at 7,200 RPM. And some of the faster ones run at 10,000 RPM. So these are still a bit faster. But the net real advantage is not so much the drives themselves as the way the RAID controller can talk to them and the caching and so forth. Right, this machine's got three network devices on it. I can, I've, it came with a lot more than that. It even came with um, fiber optic type networking, which I've got no other way of using. Um, but I'm using two of the network uh, ports, one to talk directly to my design computer and the other one just to talk to the general network. So. It's going to have a dedicated channel to the design computer so I can get speed to and from. Um, and yeah, um, so I'm really looking forward to having this thing up and running. At the moment I've just got the system installed. It will be just converted into a black box sitting in the corner. Uh, it was not designed to have a graphics adapter of any size. For argument's sake, this graphics adapter, as small as it is, is too large for this box. I managed to find a smaller one basically a similar size to this with a smaller heatsink and it's capable of running three monitors and it is a 3D card. The graphics adapter that comes with these things built in on the motherboard is very slow. You certainly couldn't do any CAD work or anything like that. But the card I've got in here could do CAD work but ultimately this is going to be a black box in the corner and I'm not going to be using the graphics adapter on it. So I'm going to be using its talents for what it's good at and sort of sidestepping its weaknesses. It's got 48 gigabytes of RAM, so it can process huge um, uh, files. This is the machine I played with some time ago with photo editing. The biggest um, image I've worked on with this thing was 5.3 gigapixels, not megapixels, gigapixels. Uh, so it's 5,300 megapixels. That's how large the file was. And it managed to get through it quite well. Yeah, I hope that's of interest to you. I'll keep you posted as to how this goes later on. Um, yeah, bye for now.